Hey everybody, my name is Chase Pipes and you're watching Chasing History, brought to you by Smoky Mountain Relic Room and American Digger Magazine, and we're back with our buddy Andre Luan at the Texas Through Time Museum for a really cool episode. So, all right, Andre, what did you discover? Well, we have discovered the first clubbed ankylosaur from the state of Texas. Okay, this is huge. So, uh, yeah, go. No. Uh, this is an armored dinosaur with a giant club on its tail. Uh, it is the first one of its kind ever found in Texas. We have a different type of armored dinosaur called notosaurs, but nobody has ever found one of these before. So this is number one. No joke. In the great state of Texas. And this is a brand new species. It is definitely a brand new species. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, and that's one of the things that you're trying to do with this museum here, is you're going out and you're looking for these new species. Absolutely. Yeah. So what was this guy about? Well, this guy was an herbivore, and uh, he was covered in armor, like these little pieces right here, uh, and had, the only defense that he really had was this large, bony club. So he's like, like the Sherman tank like with a battery. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Going the through. Sherman tank with a battery. What? That is nuts, man. Yeah. But really, I want to talk about how important this, uh, this discovery is, and then I'd love to tell you a little bit more about these, yeah. uh, these pieces that we have that help us identify it. So this is an important discovery because these dinosaurs are really well known from North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, New Mexico, but never from Texas. Uh, and also, this represents the most complete of its kind, uh, ankylosaur, even that group of dinosaurs, from where we found it, just north of the Mexican border, all the way to the tip of South America. No way. So yeah. this is the most complete. Now, now why, why, are these, why have they been found in other places and not in Texas? Uh, well, the exposures, really, the, the deposits that produce these sorts of fossils are much smaller in okay. Texas. Uh, you know, you think about the American West, that's where the bone wars happen. Cope, Cope and Marsh traipsing all over the American West in the millions of acres of what we have now as, as public lands, and they were collecting dinosaurs. In Texas, we don't have millions of acres of dinosaur dirt. You know, we maybe have really just a few thousand acres of wow. really good dinosaur dirt. Wow. Yeah. So these exposures, uh, they also extend into Mexico, which where, where they are, are far richer in dinosaurs. But it's really dangerous to work in that part of, this, of their country, and uh, it's really remote and hard to access. So there's not a lot of work happening there. Okay. Right? Yeah. So really, so everything that we know about that particular part of the world comes out of Texas. Uh, mostly, there's there's a lot of paleobotany happening now in, in northern Mexico, uh, and there has been some great dinosaur discoveries. But uh, that is true. That is fair to say. Most of what we know about these dinosaurs comes from discoveries in our part of the state. You know, this is just nuts to be right here, and this is a brand new species to science. Yes. That is nuts, dude. Yeah, it is nuts. That is so cool, man. It is nuts. I mean, you can touch it. Ah, that's awesome. So tell us about this species. What kind of bones do we got here? How did you identify it? How did you figure this out that this was a new species? Uh, man, those are great questions. And I'll, I'll start with uh, the types of bones that we have sitting out here, and they'll help me answer the question, uh, how do we determine it is. Um, when we found bones like this, they're really heavily textured. And that is, uh, that is a classic telltale sign of an armored dinosaur. They have this really gnarly rugose uh, bone structure. Even their toenails, their, their ungles, their claws, have, look like a morel mushroom in the shape of an arrowhead. Really? Yeah, they're just totally bizarre. So it's really spongy bone. It had a lot of vascularization, a lot of blood going to these things to help grow this armor. Wow. Uh, so here we have what we call an osteoderm. So this would have been one of the little armor plates. Um, this actually is represented here on this drawing as uh, we were able to identify the exact position of this plate on this dinosaur. Oh, wow. Yeah, so this uh, dinosaur would have been covered in these little osteoderms, these little armor plates as a secondary defense against predators. So this is, this is the armor plating of that dinosaur. That is so cool, man. What? What was the purpose for this species to have armor plating? Well, you know, it wasn't total coverage, so it was probably just a secondary defense, you know, some additional measure to, to help defend itself. And uh, possibly these could have been to attract mates, you know, larger, more ornate animals generally Makes get sense. the attention of, of the females. You know, that's something that we don't think a lot about in science, but there actually is in species all through time and even today 
well, the links that they go through to attract mates and right. the color and body parts and the whole nine yards. I have perfect example is the bird of paradise. Yeah, you know, exactly. How, how dragon the females are and how eccentric the males are. Yeah. Uh, that would kind of be really cool to see a, a feathered dinosaur showing off for a that's a wild thought. What if that's why dinosaurs were feathered? Yeah, I mean it very well could be. You know, very well. That's could be. cool. What else we got? Um, so this is one of the most important bones of the skull that we found. This is actually the right post orbital. That means this is the eyebrow ridge that would be on this uh, armored dinosaur skull. And this is uh, what essentially is a little horn. So this would have been covered in keratin and extended out over the eye. So like something like your fingernail. Something like your fingernail, yeah, yeah absolutely. So this is, uh, be careful, it's in yeah. two pieces there. Got it. Wow, look at that, guys. So there's the eye wall right there. And this would have been a horn coming out here. That is insanely awesome. Right, and so this is one of those diagnostic features of, of these particular dinosaurs, just like horns on cattle and antelope are today. You know, every species has a very distinct uh, growth pattern or shape, and the same is true for these dinosaurs. So this is one of the things that helped us determine uh, with the help of Dr. Jim Kirkland, Utah State Paleontologist, that this was in fact a new species. Uh, so you guys are working directly with uh, paleontologists to yeah to, to get this thing better understood. Nice. Yeah, we invited him to come out. He's uh, one of the world's experts on armored dinosaurs. He's he's named several himself. Wow. So nice. yeah, he was the per he was the perfect person to reach out to. Uh, he, we had the um, we had the privilege of having him out here to the museum, and he examined these bones and was able to determine pretty quickly comparing them to what we thought it was closest related to, mm -hmm. that it was something new. That's so cool! Uh, scientifically, this is, uh, this is really important. Aesthetically, it is not very attractive, but this is actually the brain case of this ankylosaur. Wow. So this is the occipital, this is the back of the skull that would articulate to the first vertebrae, okay. and this cavity right here that my thumb is in housed this dinosaur's brain. That's so. All right, how big was this dinosaur? This dinosaur would have been up to uh, around 19 feet long. So a 19 foot long armor plated tank, awesome dinosaur bashing stuff up, has a brain case that small. Yeah. That well, is insane, man. Yeah. What the heck? That is nuts. Yeah, that, that is, is insane. too cool. That is insane. This is a really, really cool, important dinosaur. And we've got another great bone. This is diagnostic. This is the tibia. So this is a lower leg bone of this uh, armored dinosaur. It's pretty short. It is pretty short. Well, you gotta think about, they're a stocky animal. Their defense is being low to the ground, covered in armor on top, and have that club tail to defend themselves. Yeah. So to be tall uh, would really be at a disadvantage to them. Man, that's yeah. cool. Um, this is really neat because this bone actually shows some predation here. So this oh, crushing right here uh, is so cool. This is most likely the bite of a crocodile. That's awesome, man. What? Mm. All right, so what's the next step for you in this, with this find? Well, we hope to get this thing um, described, okay. and that means officially uh, describing its, its shape, its form, where it fits in, in the taphonomy of armored dinosaurs, and giving it a proper name, wow. a scientific name. Luhanosaur. Yeah, Luhani, <laughs> Diablocephalus, I don't yeah. know, we're throwing some things around. That's them. awesome. Uh, ultimately, that will be up to the paleontologists that we partner with to, uh, to do the science. Nice. And will this species be housed here? Um, we, we hope to house this species here, but if the specimen uh, can find a better home where better science can be done, uh, we'd be happy to cooperate with those institutions to, to place it there and uh, continue to do really good science. Dude, that's, that's huge. And that working together and outreach that you're doing here at your museum is fantastic. Absolutely. I mean, you guys are doing incredible work here. Thank and you. we're so thrilled and thankful to be to come and talk with you guys and share what you're doing to all of you guys out there. So if people want to come here, if they want to see a brand new species of dinosaurs known to science, where can they come? What can they, how, how can they come check this out? Well, please, uh, first and foremost, come to uh, Texas Two Time, 110 North Waco Street in Hillsboro, Texas. We're downtown on the northeast corner of the square, and you can come and see the fossils of this very first Texas find 
the Lumposaurus, as we affect, uh, uh, affectionately call it, the first club tail and chylosaur ever discovered in our state. You can call the museum at 254-262-3466, or you can reach out to us on Facebook at Texas Through Time, or you can visit our website at texasthroughtime.org. Nice, dude. That's awesome. Thank you guys for watching. We appreciate it. Be sure to like and subscribe to the video. Share it if you want to. Check out Andre's Museum and check out other episodes that we've got with Andre and the Texas Through Time Museum on our YouTube channel. So, Andre, Thank thanks, you. man. Appreciate it. Right. History Rocks! Woohoo!